welcome back to Tam Talks, a place for real and honest conversation. So whether you're watching me right now on my YouTube channel or maybe you're listening to us on a podcast, I'm so glad you're here. If you follow me or you know anything about me, I love to teach. I'm a life coach, I'm a pastor, and I'm passionate about teaching and equipping. It's something that God wired in me as a child. And so we've tried to do so many different types of podcasts, um, but what I love is really just getting into the Word of God, um, teaching the ways of God. And this whole thing started really a few weeks ago when people started asking me about spiritual disciplines. And if you haven't caught the first one, go back last week. I talked a little bit about silence and solitude, those two beautiful spiritual disciplines. But I also mentioned that spiritual disciplines aren't per se listened, uh, listed in the Bible. It's not like the Bible says, here are certain spiritual disciplines. But the Bible does talk about things in our life, areas in our life that we need to be disciplined. So stay with me right now. Would you agree with me that we're struggling with the area of discipline in our lives right now? I don't know if it was the curse of COVID or what, but people have become so undisciplined. You know, we walk out in our pajamas to work. You know, we don't want to work full hours. We want to work remotely. We just kind of want to play. We just want to hang out. And honestly, that's the one thing as a life coach, so many people have talked to me about is the lack of discipline in our lives. And I'm telling you, it has to be an exercise. Now, I'm going to give you some good some good things today, some things that have helped me, but I believe they're going to help you as well. Discipline is a choice. It's something you want to do in your life. So whether you're disciplined physically with exercise or you're eating or, you know, your words, certain things in your life, they're disciplines because you have a conviction about it. You have a desire to be a certain way. Well, can I tell you spiritual disciplines are the same thing. It has to be a choice in your life. It has to be the fact that you say, I want to go deeper with God. I want to go deeper in the word. I want to discipline myself. The definition of discipline I think is so good. It actually comes from a Latin word and it means instruction or teaching or training. So you literally are training yourself. The Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 4, 7, really good verse. Um, listen, let me just say this. When I teach, I want to encourage you to have a pen and paper in your hand. So again, whether you're watching me right now on my YouTube channel or you're listening on a podcast, get a pen and paper because I believe God wants to say some things to you today through this teaching that I think will be helpful. So just write down this scripture in 1 Timothy 4, 7. The Bible says, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. Do you realize that you've got to discipline yourself for godliness? And it's really an important, I believe, art that we are missing in the church today, that we're missing in our faith today. So I'm going to talk to you today about the discipline of prayer. Now, as I said last time, check it out. It was on silence and solitude and how those two disciplines are so important in our life. But I'm telling you, prayer is one of the greatest disciplines you can ever have in your life. If you know anything about me, many of you have followed me and I love to hear from you. So let me just do a shout out right now. If you're watching, I'd love for you to go down right now and click that follow. I'd love for you to be a part of our team here on our Facebook family. And I'd love for you to be a part of our, um, whether it's on the podcast or whether you're on my YouTube channel right now, just go and be a part of our family and click that bell for notifications. But one thing I love to do, like I said, is instruct you and teach you. And I love to hear back from you. I would love for you to email me or contact me and let me know. But one thing we've talked a lot about is prayer. I'm an avid prayer walker. So uh, again, if you follow me, you know I do my prayer walks every morning. But can I tell you, I've learned so much about prayer. And I want to take you deeper. I want to take you some places with prayer that I've learned and I've been on this journey. And it's not just bowing your head and saying some words to the heavens. Let me tell you, we're living in a day where prayer, now this is really important. Listen to me. Prayer is becoming obsolete. Prayer is becoming almost a spiritual ritual that you're saying words to some God in the sky and you're just kind of talking. There's not a connection with the God of the universe that knows you and created you and sustained you and gives you life and gives you direction. And I want to explain what I mean. 
So last weekend I was with some girlfriends in San Diego and we went on a prayer walk, a beautiful state park called, called Torrey Pines. If you know anything about San Diego, it's a beautiful state park. And there were four of us and we decided we were going to go on a prayer walk through the park. And we decided we were just going to pray out loud. We were going to lift up our friends and our families, our children and grandchildren. We're going to lift up our country. We're just going to pray as Holy Spirit led us to pray. And we're walking, you know, it was like a, a 10 mile hike and we're walking. And listen, guys, there was this couple in front of us and we we're walking at a pretty quick pace and we kind of caught up with them. And there's this couple and she looked at the boyfriend or husband or whatever. And she goes, oh my God. And she used God's name. Oh my God, I think they're praying. And he goes, how weird. Let's get away from them. And they started walking really, really quickly. Like, like, you know, we were contagious or something. They wanted to get away from us. Listen, because the power of prayer is so attractive and contagious and powerful. I believe they felt the power of the Holy Spirit. We were interceding. We were praying. We were asking. We were petitioning. We were asking that God would move. And that couple was so uncomfortable uh, of, of us praying to God that they wanted to get away from us. We're living in a day we don't want God in our lives. We don't want prayer in our lives. We don't want this intrusive supernatural being dictating our lives. So I'm telling you, prayer has to be an understanding that you are coming to a place that you are connecting with God through your request, through your petition, through your prayer, through your thanksgiving. Let me give you a couple of verses that I really think are so, so good because they just really speak to this. We're going to talk about intercession, thanksgiving, supplication, and petition. And the Bible talks about this in the scripture. So let me give you what these are. In 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4, it says, I urge you then, listen, this is the apostle Paul. I'm teaching you here. He says, I urge you then, first of all, that petitions, and I'm going to talk to you about all these different things. These are ways that we pray. That petitions and prayers and intercessions and thanksgiving be made for all people. Now, I'm going to give you something today that's going to be a breakthrough for you in prayer you've met, never seen before. That literally we are to pray. And then the scripture goes on, listen, for kings and those in authority. Why? That we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. I'm telling you, we have not been living peaceful and godly lives in godliness and holiness. We are living lives that are disruptive, lives that are confusing. I mean, social media, there's fighting and there's anger and there's separation and there's division. And I believe that through these aspects of prayer, so again, stay with me, I'm going to break them down for you, that through intercession, through thanksgiving, through petition and supplication, we can make requests for others. So let me break these down if you've never heard the difference. Maybe you've read that verse before and you just kind of put it all under prayer but they literally are different ways that we pray. So when I'm on my prayer walk, there's times I'm interceding. There's times I'm supplicating. There's times I'm involved in thanksgiving. They are all prayers, but they're dimensions of prayers. So do you understand that? They're dimensions of prayers. So here's intercession. Intercessory prayer is praying before God on behalf of someone else. So this morning I had someone I've been coaching and working with and they are heavily burdened. They're going through a spiritual attack. They're having a difficult time. So I began to listen, intercede for that person. I brought that person to the throne room of God. I lifted up their name and I was a intercessor. So I was a go-between. I was I was praying on behalf of that person. Does that make sense to you? Now I'm going to give you some stuff. I don't want to confuse you. I can't pray for that person, but I can intercede for them. So I'm literally taking my prayer to the throne room on their behalf. And I'm saying, God, in the name of Jesus, I lift up and I tell their name. I'm going to intercede. I'm going to pray for breakthrough. I'm going to pray for healing. I'm going to pray for the right mind. I'm going to pray for scripture and wisdom and revelation. That's what intercession is. If you've ever been in an intercessory prayer meeting and you're interceding for these people, you're praying on their behalf. Now I'm going to just kind of be real bold here. If you've grown up in a Catholic church, maybe you're a little confused, and we're going to get to the scripture in a minute. So you think that you're praying, um, 
kind of through Mary or you're praying through someone, or you're praying through a priest. I wanted to explain to you so you don't under, misunderstand what I'm saying on intercession. The Bible tells us that there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So our prayer, our intercession goes to Jesus. He is our mediator and he takes it to the father. So I want you to understand you never pray through Mary. You never pray through a priest. Your prayer, if you are a believer and you are a child of God, whether you're interceding or you're petitioning, your prayer goes through that one mediator, God, the father, Jesus Christ. But I can take my heart and I can lift up through intercession prayer on behalf of another. But then there's also Thanksgiving in that verse. So there's times when I'm on a prayer walk and I just begin, listen, guys, I just thank Thanksgiving's coming Thanksgiving. And, and I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'll stay with me because these are just dimensions of my prayer walk. I just go into an attitude of Thanksgiving. I thank him for everything in my life. I thank him for my marriage. I thank him for my children. I thank him for our church. I even thank him for our country. I thank him for what he's doing. I thank him for the sun and the moon and the stars. I thank him for the breath in my life and the joy in my spirit. I go on a Thanksgiving fest. Do you realize that's praise and that's Thanksgiving and that's prayer? That's part of prayer. So often when we come, prayer is only such a heaviness in your heart. You only go to God when you're broken. You only go to God when you have a need. I'm telling you, there's times you just need to go on a Thanksgiving fest. Maybe don't ask him for anything, just praise him. Those are what we call praise fest. Do you realize in this passage we just read, that's a part of prayer. So yes, intercession. Yes, Thanksgiving. So just go on that Thanksgiving fest. And I just want to say, thank him for what you're asking him for. Thank him for the breakthrough that's coming. Thank him for the healing that's coming. That's part of prayer. And again, I wanted to teach you a little different today on prayer and all these dimensions of prayer so you understand it's not just what you will get to, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Hey, we're going to memorize that scripture and we're going to memorize that prayer and we're going to recite it all the time. But there's other dimensions of prayer. Are you with me? There's depths and dimensions of prayer. So definitely that's one is Thanksgiving. And the next is supplication and petition. Maybe those are two words you're not familiar with, but literally a, a, a supplication and a petition means a request. So you are making a request on behalf of someone else. The definition is actually supplication is our making a request known to God. So when you're supplicating, when you're in supplication, when you're in petition, you're making request. The Bible says, let our request be made known unto God and the peace that surpasseth all comprehension will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So even though I was in interceding on behalf of someone this morning. Then I went into my supplication and I went into my petition. True prayers, I'm going to give you this, it was so good. True prayer is a way of life, not just for use in case of emergency. Make it a habit and when the need arises, you will be in practice. That's what Billy Graham said. Isn't it so good? Let me read it again. And this was a man of prayer. True prayer is a way of life, not just for use in case of emergency. Make it a habit. And when the need arises, you will be in practice. Hey guys, prayer isn't just to get you out of a hard spot. Prayer isn't just when you're struggling. You know, I hear people say all the time, I don't want to bother God with that. Let me tell you, prayer is an ongoing relationship day in and day out all day long. We're going to get to this verse in a moment that talks about praying without ceasing in 1 Thessalonians. You should have such a relationship with God that you literally are praying all day long. You know, in the Old Testament, we see that they prayed three times a day and they came to God in the morning and they came to God in the afternoon and they came to God in the evening. And that was part of the Levitical law. They came to him all 
all day long. You might want to put on your alarm clock. I've got a lot of friends that actually have notifications on their phone to stop and pray. And until you get in the habit that you're praying throughout the day, you may want to put notifications on your phone. The idea is to talk to God all day long through intercession, thanksgiving, supplication, and petition. Make your request known. Don't ever think you are bothering God or burdening God, or I can handle that. When it gets really rough, I'll take it to God. Let me tell you what, that's not a relationship. A relationship with God is that you're talking to him all day long. You know, I've been married for a lot of years, and I'm still working on my relationship with my husband. And the one thing we talk about all the time is we have to stay connected throughout the day. So we text each other. We send each other stories or jokes or emojis or how you doing? How's it going today? Because that's called a relationship. I just don't want to catch up with him. You know, hey, we'll talk on Saturday, or I'll talk to you when I have a need, or I'll let you know when I have a problem. That's not a relationship. A relationship is something that goes on all day long because both parties want to be together. That's what prayer is. It's communication. It's talking to God, not just making requests for problems, but praising and talking and thanking and saying, God, I love you. God, I praise you. God, I need you in my life and being burdened for the things that burden God feeling the things that God feels. That's a relationship. Prayer is one of the most important spiritual exercises for a believer. Do you realize that Jesus spent all day and night in prayer to the Father? How many times in the Word of God in the New Testament New Testament, do we see Jesus pulling aside for prayer? Do you know there were times he was in the middle of miracles and the Bible says that he pulled away and he went away over and over and over and over and over. There was a reason because there was a theme in the New Testament where Jesus in himself pulled away to be with God the Father. He cared about his relationship with God, the father. That's what prayer is. And I think so many of us don't understand the depth of prayer is a relationship with God. It's just not learning how to articulate words of your request. It's not just reciting the Lord's prayer. It's having this in depth intimacy with God that you're talking to him all day long. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing. And we are living in a day of anxiety like I have never seen in my life, ever. Anxiety, depression, suicide, discouragement, battles. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. Make your requests known unto God. That's that word again all day long. Be in an attitude of prayer. That's what praying without ceasing is all day long. I'm telling you what, I talk to God all day long. It may be for a minute. It may be for five minutes. It may be for a prayer walk. All day long, I'm connecting. I'm checking my spirit. I'm asking God to teach me and speak to me and prompt me and convict me and lead me and love me and encourage me and stir me. That's a relationship with God. Mark 11, 24 says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received and it is yours. If you're not praying all day long, how can you have a relationship with God? Now, we all know the Lord's Prayer, and I want to take a moment and talk to you about this. It's in Matthew 6, and the Bible says, and when you pray, he, I love this because he starts out, listen, don't be like the hypocrites. Do you know, and this is this verse really hit me because I thought, am I a hypocrite? When I pray, and this God's always, look, he's the greatest life coach. Let me just tell you that. As a life coach, I always go to God and I say, God, teach me how to be the, be the best life coach. And here's what he's doing. He's coaching you. He's saying, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. Because see, prayer was a big thing in the New Testament. And so the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious leaders were all going to those points of prayer, going to the synagogue, going to the temple, going to the courts, and they were standing around like these super spiritual people so people would see them praying. And the Bible says, don't, their prayers didn't get higher than the ceiling. Don't be like the hypocrites who pray to be seen. He said, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. If you are only praying so people think you're spiritual, hey, the only people that see it are the people that are watching you. 
It doesn't even get to God's heart. So check your motive when you pray. Because he goes on, he said, assuredly, I say to you, they've already received the reward. But look, when you pray, go into your inner room. Now, I have a prayer room in my home and I go on my prayer walks because let me tell you why this is so important. And I hope you stay with me because God will reveal the intentions of your heart. As you begin to pray, God unveils, it's, it unveils, it's like a, a, an onion and the layers start to come off. And the, as I begin to pray, God starts to show me the intentions of my heart and what I'm really believing for and what I'm praying for. And that's why this is so important that you truly understand the depths of prayer. And your father, now this is so good because he says, and your father in the secret place will reward you openly. When you pray, don't pray in vain repetition, not over and over and over. And I want to get into this in our last few moments together. But then he says, your father sees. That's what I want you to understand. Prayer is so deep that your father sees it. He knows what you have need of. So when I'm praying, whether it's Thanksgiving or um, whether I'm going into um, petition or supplication, God already knows my heart and he's healing my heart. He's revealing my heart. He's taking me deeper in my heart. And then he goes through the verse. Most of us know it. Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Praise be your name. And if you want to go, let me just kind of take a minute here. If you want to go deeper, I have a whole nother podcast. I have a whole nother teaching on the Lord's prayer. I'd love for you to go back, check out my YouTube uh, um, channel. And there's a whole series on the Lord's prayer. You can find it in depth teaching, but I want to, I want to go a little deeper here because here's the thing that God showed me on my prayer walk this morning and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now I'm going to give you what I think is the greatest coaching of the Lord's prayer this tip right now. I was praying this morning and God began to show me about forgiveness. And I really realized that um, there are a few people in my life, stay with me, this may be the best thing I say today. There are a few people in my life that rub me wrong. They get under my skin. And every time I hear their name, I'm hurt. I'm angry. I brought back to a memory where they hurt me or or lied about me or put me in a bad light. And I realized that This is what the scripture is talking about, that we are to forgive others the way God's forgiven us. And here's what Holy Spirit taught me this morning. He said, you know, Tammy, every time those names came up, come up in your life and you want to go down a path where you're thinking and you're processing and you're giving them space. Listen to me. You're giving them space in your emotion. You're giving them space in your mind. You're allowing everything in you to go south with a negative memory, thought, action, reaction. You are giving them space that they don't deserve. So if you would begin to intercede for them, pray for them, love them, what happens? And God just showed me the enemy doesn't want us to pray for our enemies. So what will happen is the enemy will quit bringing them up in your mind, quit bringing them up in your thoughts because he does not want you to pray for them. He does not want you to love them. So this morning, someone came into my mind and I I have to be honest with you, it was like two or three minutes on my prayer walk. And I kept thinking about, about that person and Holy Spirit said, pray for them. Don't think about what they did to you. Don't go down the memory lane, which will be 15 minutes in your mind, in your emotion about how you're third. Stop and pray for them. And you guys, it was crazy. I started interceding and praying for them. And next thing you know, all I could do is want the best for them. And the enemy just dissipated. The memory dissipated. The thought dissipated because the enemy does not want me to pray for my enemies. Do you understand that? So if there's someone that rubs you wrong, someone that has hurt you deeply, that's why the Bible says pray for your enemies because Satan will not bring them back up in your mind. He will not bring them back up in your emotions because he does not want you to pray for them. The greatest tactic to win the war with your enemy is to pray for them, to intercede for them, to supplicate for them, to enter into thanksgiving for them. That's the war of prayer. And I'll tell you what, you will win every single time. The enemy literally will not bring them up in your mind because he does not want you praying for them. You know, prayer is so powerful. I believe it's the greatest spiritual discipline. I believe prayer is the greatest weapon of our warfare. 
I did a series on Ephesians 6. I'm going to ask you to go back and watch that. But the last thing is the power of prayer. And you can, you can have, you can have all those weapons of your warfare in Ephesians 6. But if you're not girded in prayer, if you don't understand the power of prayer, you'll never be able to battle the enemy. So I want to give you a couple coaching steps as we close right now. And these are three things that I do that have helped me so much with prayer. The first thing is set your alarm for five minutes before you typically get up. So if you get up at 630 in the morning, set it for 625. And then what you do, you immediately roll out of bed and roll on your knees. You don't have to tell your spouse you're waking up. You don't have to tell anybody. You just immediately pivot from your bed to your knees and you spend five minutes on your knees and you welcome Holy Spirit in your day. You thank God for your breath, your life, your ministry, your job, your family. Just spend five minutes. So pivot from the bed to your knees for five minutes. And before long, that will become literally a habit of your life. Just five minutes. You don't have to spend 20 minutes, 30 minutes, unless Holy Spirit shows you. Just start five minutes on your knees. And there's something about pivoting from the bed to your knees that puts you in a place of surrender. That's your first step. And then the second thing, memorize and recite the Lord's Prayer. I love the Lord's Prayer. Now, we've heard and you've heard me say before, of course, I believe that's the model prayer. I don't think that's actually the Lord's Prayer. I think the Lord's Prayer is in the Gospel of John when he literally is in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's praying to his Father. I believe this is the model prayer when the disciples and they came and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he recited and he said, when you pray, pray like this. But I believe that it's a beautiful model prayer. And what I would encourage you to do is I want to encourage you before you go to sleep every night to recite the Lord's Prayer. Do you realize that your mind never goes to sleep? Your body goes to sleep, but your mind does not go to sleep. And the smartest thing you can do is to recite scripture because I believe the prayers of the night become the prayer praises of the morning. The prayers of the night become the praises of the morning. And I believe you literally can take every thought captive before you go to sleep. If you go to sleep by reciting prayer, reciting scripture, if you literally go to sleep and you're quoting scripture that you will wake up. And I believe God's going to give you dreams and visions and prophecies through your sleep. But you have to go to sleep, not watching some horror movie, some Netflix, some fight with your spouse, some burden on your heart. Before you go to sleep, just enter into that sweet sleep and just recite the Lord's Prayer. And then the last one, is there something blocking your prayer request? Is there something right now blocking your your prayer request. It could be the need of forgiveness. And that's why I want to touch on this today. If there is someone that you have unforgiveness toward, I believe that you need to begin to pray for them and intercede for them and do not give the enemy space in an area of hatred, anger, unforgiveness. Pray for your enemies. And I believe you will begin to think about them less and less. They will not have space in your heart or in your mind because the enemy does not want you to pray for your enemies. I mean, Satan enemy doesn't want you to pray for your physical enemies. So guys, this is again, a whole new level of prayer. I want to take you, people say to me, Pastor Tammy, how in the world can you pray for two hours? Well, it's been a discipline. It's been a journey, but I can tell you, I go for two hours and I literally am talking to God. I'm walking, I'm praising, I'm talking, I'm lifting up people. Um, my mind might go somewhere. I bring that thought back. That's called the discipline of prayer. And learn how to pray with him all day long. Wow, guys, that was good, huh? I love prayer. Um, I just have to tell you right now, I'm so excited about this series of spiritual disciplines and I don't want you to miss our next time together. I'm going to be talking to you about one of the hardest spiritual disciplines in the Bible and that's the discipline of confession. 
I've started studying confession and I've learned things I have never, ever seen before. And we're going to go deep next week in the spiritual discipline of confession. So guys, share these with your friends, please. I believe we're not talking enough about spiritual disciplines. Please share these, whether they be on the podcast or on my YouTube channel with someone. Thank you for following me. I love you. I pray for you. And I believe God's got great things in store. I'm praying blessings over you today. Have a great day. God bless. Bye-bye.